Okay, uh, here I am. Uh, so, um, as always, anyone um, in the chat, you can tell me if the sound is okay. Oh, good. Uh, thank you, Derek. Okay, so hello, everyone. Um, I'll start. Uh, so this is the quarterfinals of the Samsung Cup. And today, um, so quarterfinals, obviously, there's four games being played um, by a total of eight players. But today, they only have two games being played. So the other game is um, Shin Jin So, who is my favorite to win this tournament. It's loud. I can turn it down a little bit. It's Shin Jin So. Um, and it is, um, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm worried about the internet um, situation in Korea because they are having some issues there. And I hope that Go Baruk Weichi isn't correct because I am a bit worried that they might have uh, continued to have some problems with the internet. Um, the, day, the games today were delayed one hour because of that. And... Um, if they get cut off, I'll probably just have to take a break and um, come back whenever it gets started again. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, uh, so that's one thing. Also, um, I wanted to tell you that a, a lot of people here who come to watch my live streams were suggesting I should do it on Twitch also. Um, so I have made... Um, I quickly made a channel on Twitch, and it's just bare bones at this point, so I'll, I'll give you a a link just in case people want to go and uh, take a look at the Twitch channel um, and tell me what I'm doing wrong. So I'll put a link in here and I don't know anything about Twitch so um, so maybe I'm making some terrible mistakes there you can just tell me if I if I am. Uh, so that's uh, that's it. Um, I'll Let's take a look at the game um, there's something that's happening on the left side. I think some people were talking about it in the comments, um, asking what happens if white cuts at C9. There are people who are asking that question. This is something that locally it's not really working, but it um, interferes with the lower right, the lower left corner. Um, so, for instance, locally, black can play here and here, and if white curls around, black can connect to the corner. So this is not really working for white. It's going to be a, a tough fight for white. It's not, it's not going to be very successful. So that doesn't work. But white, in the middle of this variation... Let's see, where's the pointer? Okay. Yeah, here we go. Um, in the middle of this variation, white can cover here. And if black lives in the corner, now this is going to be trouble. Like Sometimes black can capture like this. But in this board position, um, it looks a bit troublesome for black. So if black plays here, it's a, it's a net. And if black plays here, it's not a net, but it's, uh, it's not looking good. So for instance, like this, like this, and white can capture from this side. So white might have to push once more before white does that, though. Yeah, yeah let's, just, let's just be a bit more careful and play this exchange first. And then white can go ahead and do this. So... Um, it's not quite working for black. So what might happen in actuality is that um, black will probably sacrifice the corner in many cases. Black has a choice of sacrificing the corner like this and allowing white to capture it. Or if black doesn't want to do that, black would have to sacrifice the one stone like this. And then white would be able to capture that one stone. So there is this thing that's happening there. Now, Twitch is ahead of us. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure out that um, with um, some test broadcasts. Like, I I created my Twitch channel and um, made it possible for me to broadcast on both at the same time. I worked that out a, a few seconds before my live stream here. So, it's not really as if I've gotten into the details. I'll probably do some tests um, and figure out how to make the um, timing work together. Okay, um, let's just go back to the beginning of the game now. 
So we're at this point where y is playing an attachment underneath. Let's go back to the beginning. All right. So black played the um, this opening. This is actually playing a 3-4 point, and if white plays diagonally, playing these two 3-4 points facing each other, it's become a fairly popular opening. Right. Uh, thanks, Derek. Yes, I do have Patreon. Um, uh, let's see. I can I can give a link for that, too. And yes, people can play me if they sign up for the $50. Um, where's my Patreon link? Oh, well, I'll get to it. It's in a different place. Yeah. I'll, I'll get to that later. Okay, let's get back to the game. Um, so black invades the three three point. So this is this is a move that is um, it's on um, it's something that AIs suggest. Our computer programs will suggest that. So it's a move they play, and white plays a kakari. This is actually one of the cases where that corner enclosure is about the same size as black playing um playing on this side uh excuse me i have to make oops so it's about the same size as black playing here so usually you see top players always answering like this or like this nowadays um they can play the diagonal move too but it's one of the rare cases where black can play away and allow white to press here and white bumps against the summary this is also a move where like if black plays if black plays on top White's probably going to curl underneath and extend here. This is a whole Josie. I actually did some videos about this one. And if black uh, plays underneath, I could go on for a while here. We'd probably lose track of the game. So I'll leave it there. Um, and if black plays underneath, white's going to cover here. Um, both of these can, be, can become fairly complicated. So, um, And it's perfectly okay for black to go down. It's, it's as if white had played a shoulder hit. Uh, as if black had played a um, a knight's corner enclosure and white had played a shoulder hit. So it was an attachment, yes. But it's the same thing. It's the same shape that they end up with. And just once here, um, basically, um, black had a number of choices and white wanted black to commit there. So after playing that exchange, um, it is feasible that that exchange... Um, having seen that black is played underneath like this, it's conceivable that um, white can think of this as a, a, a profit, a, a kikashi. Although it's really hard to judge whether it really is good or in some cases it's going to be a bad move. So it sort of depends on how they continue. So black plays. This is a fairly um, conservative extension where black could have played one more to the right. Um, putting more pressure on white, and this would be aiming at the um, the peep here directly. Whereas this move, as we see here, it's just extending one more move. And white's um, group there, it's not alive yet. Right. Just sign up to my channel or, or look at it, and if you look for AI Joseki, there's a whole section of AI Josekis that I... Um, have those modern moves in. Okay, um, so at this point, it's interesting because um, computer programs like AlphaGo and now it's KataGo and uh, Leela and um, some of the stronger ones that are not quite as accessible, like I'm, I'm usually just using programs that I can actually install onto my computer, so so it's um, I have a lot of control over what I do with it. But of course, there are some very strong uh, Chinese programs too, like uh, Fine Art, um, and there's another one. Uh, forget the name, um, which you can sometimes get on servers. So um, they they tend to um, have a completely different variation for when white plays here. So this is a move that we consider very effective. And basically the idea here is that if uh, this happens and white pushes through and cuts, um, if the ladder favors white, 
this is going to work for one, because if black captures that one stone, uh, white can just capture these black stones here. So white wins the race to capture. Uh, Galax Galaxy, yes. Thank you, James. James Sedgwick has, has it. That, that's one of the strong programs. And so this is working for white. Um, and apparently it's okay for black when black does something like this. And it's probably going to be something like this. Um, white could have done this, actually. But um, this is the way black's going to handle it. And that black stone on the right is not completely dead. And it works in its own way for black also. So this would be about even, I think. So to go back to the... White didn't actually do that. This is something that I would have sort of wanted to do, that attachment towards the 3-3 three, three point. Um, just because if, if Black plays the old Joseki, which is to do something like this, and White can... For instance, White can do this, and that's going to settle the whole corner. Or white can play here. And this usually settles the corner also, because white is threatening to push through and cut here, uh, which is usually just going to capture those two black stones there. So white white's going to get a strong position there, and would probably continue with something on the lower, lower side. Yeah. So this was an option, but uh, he didn't actually go for that. Uh, interesting to see white play there. I would never have thought of that move. And black plays here. So this is how black sort of punishes that um, that white stone at its f4. And so black's making a nice moyo there. And is also looking at the option of, um, for instance, later on black's thinking, with that strong position in the upper left, black is looking at the cut here. So this is something that black is looking to do, do next. So that sort of explains white's next move, I think, because white plays here putting pressure on that black group. And now if black pushes through and cuts, uh, black sort of owes a move there because that, that white stone that happens to have a triangle on it, the marked stone, is threatening to kill the black group in the corner. So it means black would have to go back. Or white could even be more, more um, play even stronger than that by playing here. Uh, this would be a kind of a squeeze, which would usually be good for white. Or if black plays out here, now the corner group is not going to be able to live even. So white has some fairly strong replies if black tries pushing through the cut. Another way to do it would be to just simply cover here. And again, white would be trying to kill black in the corner. So that is how white is getting rid of the threat of the push through and the cut there with this move here on the second line, threatening black's eyes. So black crawled and extended here. So this is a, a way of living in the corner. It would be straightforward for black to cover on the second line. But then, of course, white would have the initiative to play something like this. So it's a more active way for black to live. Playing here, uh, making connecting at the B, uh, B12 point, Mi, uh, with covering in the corner at the C18 point. And people tell me the, the um, coordinates are sort of crazy on this board. They are not the same as um, you find in some of the Western Go servers. Um, but they, yeah, they're just particular to this server. The um, convenient thing about this server is that it also has, it, it the moves are there automatically. So it makes it easy for me. I don't have to input them, have, or have someone input the moves or do it myself. And also I can switch around to watch some other games because um, Shin Jin So also is playing today. So, so there's a game of his that we can look at later. The P8 cut. The P8 cut. The P8 cut is probably not so big. It's, it's, a, it's a cut that Black cannot um, play strongly against. Um, okay, that's an interesting. Clayton is saying, didn't Cho Chukun or someone beat Galaxy? A number of pros have played against AIs, but I think it was actually before they started incorporating the, um, the system that, um, DeepMind created with AlphaGo. And so, um, 
the weights that they created, um, which are now used by something like that. It's used. They have the same same system on with Katako and, and all of the strong AIs. So before that, um, there was a period where the strongest um, computer program was a Japanese program, which was called Zen. And there was a period where that was the strongest program. And as it started to use some some of the more advanced techniques that um, I think it, it the, towards the end, it incorporated some of AlphaGo's um, weights also. And there was a period where it was about the same strength as a top pro. So uh, Chochukun did play that program. I think that's the program that he played. The P8 cut. The P8 cut. Yes. Oh, yes. The P8 cut. Um, it looks big. Let's make a diagram for that. And Black cannot. Um, Black would have to be pretty submissive here. Um, I don't know exactly how Black would answer it. Maybe something like this. But with a black group here on the on the lower half of the board, um, so something like this or something like this might happen. With this black group sort of interfering, it's going to be difficult for white to get a big center out of this. So it's something that may or may not happen. It's it sort of depends on how it gets set up, um, and it, maybe it's maybe white's not going to do that because white's group on the upper side is for the time being it's alive anyway. The non-Western coordinates, it's its just a different system. Um, and it's just that the, the uh, that my access to the games is so much easier in this server that um, for some of these live broadcasts, I'm, I'm using it. Oh, yeah, they're small. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's this game. I think I'm pretty much caught up. White did play the attachment underneath. And we're having a pause here. So I am worried about the live broadcast, actually. Um, because it's been a while since White played this move. But meanwhile, why don't we take a look at the other um, the other, the other game. Yes, see, see what that one's looking. It, it hasn't moved either. Um, so let's see. Um, Yeah, it does seem a bit slow. So here we have uh, the other game that's the quarterfinal. And uh, so that information at the top right of the screen is not correct for this game. Uh, the player with black is uh, Han... Han... Oh, I, I forget his uh, name. It's Han Ji, Ji Shun or something like that. And white is Shin Jin So in this game. Let's just quickly take a look at the, at the moves. Okay, black plays an approach move, and white dives into the 3-3 point. This is just something that happens here. And black plays this. This is a, a, a the high approach here was very popular for a time. And um, actually, some of the games I talked about, my own games, uh, where we've gotten into this joseki, has become a popular joseki. It's a it's a more active move, maybe, than the, the low double kakari, which is which is this one. So it's a more active move. And uh, and the most modern joseki is that white extends here, where um, before we had computer programs stronger than humans, most of the time you would see white pulling back here. So it's, it's a joseki that changed uh, with research with computer programs. And um, it was played a lot too, this whole thing. Um, I think I played a game last year in which I played this Joseki. And white plays here. White's looking at the cut there. So if black does something else, white is threatening to push through and cut here and capture these two stones. Um, pretty much capture them. So that would be painful for black. And black connected here. White played the hanging connection. And it's white's turn to play some kind of a pincer probably. And if you believe the Go server, then White's been thinking about this for something like half an hour or longer than that. 
And so I am sort of anxious that maybe, maybe they're having some more trouble with the internet, actually. Uh, there was uh, the user Go Baduk Weichi was um, indicating that they might be breaking off. So that I'm sort of worried about that. Um, uh, but this fight here, the fact that Black has this uh, sort of heavy group of three stones on the left side, um, it's probably perfectly, it's probably okay for white. Okay, let's go back. Um, let's go back to the other game just for a moment. Yeah, it's, it's stopped. Um, it seems to be live. The, the clock is moving. Um, but I don't see anything happening in the game. Uh, there are some other games going on. Uh, like you'd wonder what happened to the two of the strongest Japanese players. They're not in this tournament. Um, uh, they're playing this game. So this is a Japanese uh, domestic game. Um, yes, they're playing the games online. Except for this one, which is in, in Japan, it's being played face-to-face. -face. Um, a similar opening, actually. Black actually started with the same uh, facing 3-4 points. So it's the same up to this point. Only Black played a corner enclosure uh, where um, uh, Lee, uh, Lee Chanso was playing uh, this 3 3 invasion here. So a pretty mundane beginning here, and like, like this. And this move. This is sort of uh, a really interesting move. I think Black is sort of looking at the option of um, closing off the center. So if White plays something like this, White, Black would maybe be doing stuff like this to try to um, maybe even more forcefully close off the center like this. So that's kind of the idea that Black has here. And White jumped out. Black jumped in. And it got into this crazy trade which is actually it's looking pretty good for Black. Um, what Black does have some potential to attack in the center there. And his group, his stone in the corner, it's not dead yet. So he starts immediately um, making a life here. Yeah. So this worked fairly well for Black. Black escaped there. And this is the position so black is connected on the side for the time being, and white has kind of a bad connection. And this is the um, the decisive match to choose the challenger for the Kisei tournament. So I um, I sort of wandered into this game room, but um, yeah, if I dwell too much on it, maybe they'll um, be upset with me because I'm not really supposed to be doing domestic tournaments here. But yeah. Um, it's, it's going to decide who challenges for the Kisei tournament. And it's two of the strongest players in Japan. Black is Ichiriki Ryo, and white is Shibano Toramaru. So they're two of the strongest players. Ichiriki was the winner of the highest league. I think they call it the special league or something. And Shibano um, won his way up from a lower section. And so they're playing a best of three. But uh, Ichiriki only has to win one of the three games. He, he has an advantage of one win in this best of three. Uh, so Shibano has to win two of the two of the games. It looks good for Black. So um, if Ichiriki wins this game, he's already the challenger. So that's uh, that's that game. Um, let's go back and see see if they're doing anything with the. Okay. Um, this doesn't look very promising. <laughs> okay. Were there any questions about this? P14. P14. Um, in this game. That's a good question. Tyler was asking about the P14. Or, uh, you, you're sure it's not P16? 
So p14, and uh, it would be this move. And um, it's probably an example of playing from the wrong side. Um, just because this area on the right side of the board, um, the fact that black is fairly strong in the upper right corner makes it relatively small. And of course, white's, white's territory, potential territory in the center and the, um, the lower side towards the center is probably more important. So I'd say that it's probably from the wrong side. Um, I could take back some moves here. Um, maybe white's even going to play a, a high knight's move here. Um, but I think black's playing from the wrong side when black plays on the right side of the board. And the next question was, um, Thumper, should black avalanche? Should, oh, yeah. But um, first of all, I want to talk about the attachment here, which is actually, this was a move that was, um, it was played by AlphaGo a lot. And it became the normal move because other AIs like it also. And the idea is that Black can turn this around here um, to take a good position on the right side. So this actually might be better than uh, the P14 approach because it's giving Black more space than that other Joseki on the right side. So um, this is something that Black could play. Uh, and if White extends to the side, uh, Black can play down. Uh, sorry. Uh, usually it goes something like this. In this case, black might even be tra trying something towards the left here, since white has that area. And then Thumper was asking, should black avalanche? And that's a really good question. Um, oh, go Dave 89 Good morning. Um, someone's saying something in Korean, but I'm sorry I don't read that language. So that's a good question. Should black um, avalanche? In this case, white's going to play the, the short avalanche. And having this stone at K17 gives white a local advantage there. Um, let's see how this is going to turn out. So for instance, like this. Um, looks like the ladder... Oh, sorry. The ladder... Um, the ladder favors black, surely. Yeah, it favors black. Um, but white can play, um, maybe even play this one first and play here. And black will not be able to, um, white could even capture this side. So black's not going to be able to uh, accomplish much in this fight. So maybe not, um... It was interesting because I did take a quick look uh, with an AI and um, the AI um, had to do a lot of um, playouts and it was looking at the, it, it was looking at playing the avalanche. So that's obviously a, it's one of the um, it's one of the options. Okay, um, that's bad news. He says that today the goal is finished. And he's probably, um, being a Korean, maybe he's someone who's in the know about that. Because um, I was sort of suspecting that because the the move stopped coming. And, um, right. So that's bad news. It might be the end of my broadcast here. Um, but let's just talk about the avalanche. So the avalanche would be the short avalanche here. And it was looking at... Um, this move with probably with some kind of a um, a loose connection like this heading towards the the left there would be another way to play or actually playing the gosegen move which is this one um, which is a move that um, it doesn't really have been it hasn't been played with that white stone on the side very much but it's a move that is trying to get into the um, it's trying to get into the large avalanche so if white crawls here Black is trying to get the large avalanche. And again, with that white stone on the side, there's no way Black's going to be able to play the fighting variation. And Black would probably play something like this. Oh dear. It looks like they um, had to cancel the broadcast in Korea. Um, everyone's saying that, and it's what it looks like because um, we're not getting any moves. And so, 
turns out that maybe today we had a rather short broadcast, and I sort of wonder if um, what they're going to do with the games. Maybe they're going to be playing them tomorrow or something. Um, it's probably not decided. So I'll, um, I think I'm going to stop here, I suppose. It's a bit disappointing. As white, how do you decide? Oh, Rick Rubenstein is asking, as white, how do you decide when giving black that huge upper left is okay? Um, it's hard to decide. You find it hard to judge. It it is hard to judge. Uh, in this case, it's sort of okay because white has so much space there, and like I was saying before, white does have the cut here. Which can, if black plays here, white's taking that one stone. And if black plays here, um, white can make a, either capture the corner or, or th this would be, living in the corner now would be bad for black because uh, black's position would fall apart there. So once black has played this move at four, black is sort of committed to sacrifice the corner. Otherwise, if black plays here, White's getting, it's it's not as big as maybe it looked. So, um, the real answer is that it's, it's really, it's sort of complicated. And it, I'm, it's, it's okay to find it hard to judge. Okay, so I guess that's it. Um, and we're stuck at this move. And it doesn't look like they're going to continue the game for the time being. Oh yeah, the Patreon link. Hey, thanks for, um. Derek Neal is really good at um, reminding me about these things. I tend to forget. So just in case you really want to play me a game, let's see if I can find the Patreon link. Just so people... And, and there's, um, there's all sorts of tiers. Um, you can be a supporting member or whatever. Or choose your own donation. Um, it's for people who want to, um, it's for people who want to support the channel. So thank you. And thanks for people who took a look at my, uh, Twitch broadcast also. Um, it was more of an experiment than anything else today because it was the first time. Um, so, uh, thank you all. And I'm going to finish here. Um, I think I'm finished for today and I'll probably come back at some other point when I have time. There, I think the uh, final is supposed to be on the 1st of November. So that's one week from today, the same day of the week. So if that happens on schedule, um, I'll probably try to make a stream. So it's going to be uh, Sunday night for people in America, probably. And thanks for coming, and I'm finishing. Thank you.